All Saints Sunday. So what does that mean? I have a story for us here first thing this morning. It's a Jewish story, actually, that talks about what it means to be blessed. An old rabbi said, In the olden days, there were men who saw the face of God. And his young student asked, Well, why don't they see the face of God anymore? And the old rabbi said, Because nowadays, no one wants to stoop so low. I see some interesting faces. What does that mean? It means that in order to see God, we have to take away everything that we've thought and everything that we believe in and trust only in God's grace and what God can give us. We have to stoop so low that we cannot trust on our own doings. We have to become lowly, right? Most of us don't want to be a lowly person. We spend a lot of our lives making ourselves look big, make it look like we have the right cars, we live in the right houses, we have the right phones, we have the right clothes, we all do the right things, right? We spend a lot of time and money and resources on making ourselves look like we have it all together because we don't want to be that lowly person. We don't want to be the one who needs someone else's help. We all want to walk tall. We want to show the world that we have it all together. We want to feign to have the air that everything in our lives are perfect and we're happy all the time, right? Because that what, that's what blessed means, right? To be happy. That's what it means to be blessed, is to be happy. But according to this rabbi, it's the lowly, those who stoop low, those who get down on a level where they have to look up are the ones who get to see the face of God. It's not about feigning we have it all together. It's about understanding that there's no way possible that we can have it all together. And going against what culture tells us to do, which is exactly what Jesus does this morning in our lesson. Bless you. So what does it mean to be blessed? I couldn't have asked that to happen any better. That was perfect. (laughs) I'll pay you later. (laughs) So what does it mean to be blessed? In ancient Greek, the word is makros, means blessed. And in ancient Greek time, to be blessed meant that you were a god. The blessed ones were the gods, those who were in a completely different place, those who had, had achieved a state of happiness and contentment in life beyond all cares, labors, and even death. They had no concerns whatsoever. They were the ones who were blessed with living in a completely other place, in a completely other world, away from the cares and problems and worries of ordinary people. Right? To be blessed in ancient Greek, you had to be a god. How many of you are gods? I got a few hands going up over there. Maybe. Saintly, maybe. Secondly, it came to be to refer to those who we honor today, right? We honored those who have passed from our midst. It came to be known the blessed were the ones who had died. They were the dead. The blessed humans were ones who through death had reached the world that only the gods could obtain, someplace else different, someplace away. They were beyond the cares, the problems, and the worries of our earthly life here. To be blessed, you had to be dead. That is the origin of the day that we celebrate here today. And the day that we celebrate, we as Lutherans don't celebrate them much, but those of you who are Catholics probably remember celebrating the days of the saints and the saints' days. And that's where that celebration came from, was remembering the day on which a saint died, right? When we remember a saint, it is on the day that the saint passed. That's the saints' day. And all saints' day is for those saints who, as a church, we don't know their name, but we still celebrate the collectiveness that they are now blessed. They are now saints in the triumphant gathering with God around that great banquet table. That's where this celebration comes from. And finally, in ancient Greek, the word blessed came to refer to what we use it to refer to today. The elite, the upper crust of society, the wealthy people. It referred to the people whose riches and power put them above the normal people of the world. It put them above the normal cares, problems, and worries of life. 
The people, it put them above the cares, worries, and problems of lesser people, the peons who constantly struggle with worry and labor in life. To be blessed, you had to be very rich and very powerful. So then the word blessed, used in the Old Testament translation, took on another meaning. First it was God, then it was those who had passed, then it was those who were elite, and then it took on a fourth meaning. It referred to the results of living right or being righteous, doing everything right. If you lived the right life, you were blessed. Being blessed meant you received earthly and material things, so you were again an elite person. You had a good wife, you had many children, you had abundant crops, you had riches, you had honor, you had wisdom, you had beauty, you had good health. All the things that all the good, great people have, right? That we all strive after, that we all try to make people believe that we have, right? We can't let anybody know that we don't have it all together. These are all the things that we try to make sure that the world sees us as having. A blessed person had more things and better things than ordinary people and those who weren't blessed. So to be blessed, you had to have big and beautiful things. How many people want big and beautiful things? You're in church. <laughs> so the blessed ones lived on a higher plane than the rest of us. They were gods. They were human who had, humans who had passed away and had gone to the world of the gods. They were the wealthy, the upper crust of society. They were the ones who had many possessions. They were the blessed who were above those in our normal lives who worried about all the normal cares, problems, and worries that we all face in an everyday life. Right? And then Jesus comes in and as he normally does, takes everything and turns it upside and down on its head. Because Jesus said that those who you think are blessed are not blessed. Who does Jesus say are blessed? The elite, the rich, the powerful, the high, the mighty, the people with the big and beautiful things? Are those the people that Jesus just told us were blessed? No. According to Jesus, Jesus pronounces God's blessing on the lowly, on the poor, the hungry, the thirsty, the meek, the mourning. Throughout all of history in the world, the elite, the rich, the powerful, the high, the mighty, the people with the big and beautiful things have always been the ones who were considered to be blessed. And Jesus, like He normally does, comes in and turns everything over on top of its head. And said, those of you who think you've got it all together are not the one that God is going to bless. Jesus, Jesus turns it all upside down. And the elite in God's kingdom are the ones who are blessed in God's kingdom, are the ones who are at the bottom of the heap of humanity, the ones who are stooping so low that all they can do is look up. The lowly are the ones who are blessed by God. So if you want to see the face of God, you have to learn how to stoop down low. And why are the lowly the ones who are blessed, because God said so. Right? How many of you have parents have ever had a question from one of your children, and the answer that you returned to them was, because I said so. <laughs> Kids, how many of you have heard that before? <laughs> right? As a parent, you get asked this question, and finally you just go, it's just because I said so. <laughs> That's just the way that it is. There's no explanation for it. There's no reason behind it. That's just the way that it is. God said that the lowly are blessed because that's what God said. And that's the way that it is. The lowly are blessed because God said they are. Jesus gives us the Beatitudes to declare what is, what is reality based upon what God is doing. The Beatitudes don't tell us about something that's going to happen. It doesn't say blessed are the poor for they will be filled or given whatever it is. Blessed are the, the poor and thirsty in spirit for they will be filled. It's they are filled. It's something that's happening now. It's not something that's going to happen. It's not some divine great thing that's going to happen in some future place in time. It's something that God is saying is a reality here and now. These are not given to us either as attributes that we are to seek. We're not supposed to seek to be mourning. We're not supposed to seek to be poor in spirit and poor and hungry. We're not supposed to seek to be these things. They are things that happen to us because of who we are in God. That also means that they're not entrance requirements for people that want to come and join us. We don't have to go out and find the poor people, the thirsty people, the hungry people. Those are people that are going to come to us because they're actually seeking to be here. 
But that doesn't mean you have to be that way to be a part of God's community. It's a declaration of what God's kingdom is and what's happening in God's current reality. The lowly are the blessed because God says that they're blessed, simply because God said so. And as it said in Revelation, He will wipe away every tear. There will be no more crying. There will be no more dying. For we will all be together in God's kingdom. And that's not something that's going to happen in some future date. That's something that God is setting into reality right here, right now. And we can't see it because of who we are and what we're living in. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, For for now I see in a mirror dimly, but then we shall see face to face. I believe that speaks not just of love as it is in chapter 13, which is the love chapter, but it speaks of an end time where Paul doesn't see everything that's happening around him now, but once God's creation is complete and God unleashes everything around us and brings us all to that great banquet table that we will see face to face and we will understand everything that God has been doing here in this place. Because God's kingdom is not something that's going to happen at some future time and date. God's kingdom is something that's happening right here, right now. Because God said so. And each and every one of us are saints walking in that reality. So claim hold of that reality. Know that He's going to wipe away every tear and that our mourning will be no more. And that He's called each and every one of us, as I told the children up here this morning, children of God, you are God's child and He loves you and He will do anything He can for you. So live in that reality. Live in His reality of His kingdom coming fully to us here and now. And go into the world and share that reality with everyone. That blessed are the lowly. Because we get to look up. And we get to see God's face. And know, no matter what happens, that you are always His child. And He will always bless you. Because God said He would do that. Amen.